Good evening to all of us. Welcome to the second day of this Fresh Oil Seminar and also second of June. Number two has meaning in the Bible. Verily, verily, Christ emphasized. So as we gain a prophesying for ourselves, this second day of the month, there shall be verily, verily blessing covering your life and family and destiny in Jesus' name. Yesterday, I preached on as far as you can see. Today, I want to talk about finishing well. Tell for people, you will finish well. You will finish well. You will finish well. You will finish well. Tell yourself, hit your chest. I will finish well. Now, let's go. In life, no one wants to have abandoned projects. However, for one neglect or the order of what we are supposed to do, we don't actually finish well. God's plan is for his children to finish well. It is good to remind ourselves that life is full of battles. That's why people don't finish well. You can't live on this earth without battle. Life is a warfare, not funfare. Evils are present all over the face of the earth, and only Christians who know how to fight the battle can win the case. Let's look at some scriptures to prove that life is a warfare, and if we don't recognize from the beginning, we'll have problems. For example, number one, Deuteronomy 21. God was speaking to them. When thou goest out to battle, you see, not if, if means it, you know, it, but when, say, definite time to come to pass in life, against the enemies and seeth horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord that God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So this verse already shows that battles will come your way, but you will also overcome because the Lord Jehovah is fighting the battles for you. He's a man of war. I love you, Terry. So he won for Moses. He won for David. He won for all of them. In our time, he will back us up in battle. And we will be watching like Jehoshaphat. God will be fighting. We will be looking at it in Jesus' name. As we have in John Chronicles 20, 20 24. Ephesians 6, 12. Shows us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm not true. First Timothy 6:12. I've quoted Testament and quoting Testament now. Fight the good fight of faith, Apostle Paul said. Lay hold on eternal life, where unto thou art also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. First Timothy 1 18. Paul also speaking to Timothy. This charge I commit unto thee, my son Timothy, according to the prophecy which went on before thee, that thou might then might as war a good warfare. So fighting is not a bad warfare. Second Timothy 4 7. Paul also knew. He said, I fought. A good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. The verse is there. there. Now there's a crown of glory waiting for me. Not only me, but as many as believe is coming. Please, life is full of battles and life is full of victories. Some will fail, some will succeed. Say, I will succeed. I will succeed. When did this fight start? The scripture makes it clear to us that the devil tried to usurp God in Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. He said, I will be like the most I will I said the throne. I will be like the five of them. Christ had five manifestos to share. Satan was trying to steal that agenda. He said if he will go above this one, he will stay upon the stars of heaven and was trying to dethrone God. And God said in verse 15, from where you are talking, you shall come down. And it was driven from heaven. Revelation 12:4, Bible says the tail of Satan drew a third of the 
ministers of heaven and came to this earth as demons. They are all over the place warring against Christians. But sensitive Christians know as they pray and fast and pray in the spirit, they can discern where evil is. The name is called Lucifer, also called Satan. He is the accuser of the brethren, looking for who to devour. He will not devour you. Satan may not devour me. He will be moved around. You are not his customer in Jesus' name. He cannot deceive you. The Spirit of God upon you will let you know his tactics in Jesus' name. Some examples of those who finish well in scriptures. One, we have a covenant father, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They finish well. Say, so I will finish well. I will finish well. Because if our forefather succeeded, we also succeed. Joseph finished well. Despite the temptations, challenges, trials he went through, he lived to fulfill the vision he saw earlier in life. I pray for everyone hearing me. You will live to see the future and possess that possession of that vision like Joseph did. And live not to what attend. Nobody killed him. He died at good old age. That will be your portion. You will see the vision. Nothing will truncate your life. You will live long, fulfill it. Me, I'm enjoying my vision now. And you will enjoy your own and live from it. And your family and loved ones will enjoy from it in Jesus' name. Mordecai helped Esther to rise. Esther got to the throne and made sure Mordecai also rose. And two of them became leaders, one queen, one vice president of the country. And they also ended with John, sorry, Esther 10, 1 to 3. They said the reign of Mordecai was peaceful. All people loved him. His love is eternal. And the Jews became leaders and it was triumphantly clear under Mordecai's time. Mordecai helped Esther to rise. Esther helped Mordecai to rise. So be a part and be interested in the rise of your fellow members in church and well loved ones at home. Who has finished well? Nehemiah, Daniel equally finished well. Nehemiah became a governor after rebuilding the broken wall. He did not apply for it. He come and be a governor. He went to the Porto King. I asked him, uh, I asked judges. I'm going. He said, I'll be going. He became a governor. Daniel interpreted dream, and later he became a leader. He served under Nebuchadnezzar. He served under Belshazzar. He served under Darius. He served under Cyrus. Four heads of state. Daniel was loved by all the different politicians. Paul and Jesus finished your time. I told you, Paul finished your time. Jesus also, when he drank the wine, said, it is finished, and gave up the ghost. He had finished assignment. Gave it to the apostles to go around the world and preach the gospel. Paul also knew when he was going to finish, and he said, my time has come. Please don't go anywhere until your time comes. Apostle Paul and Jesus saw the weight of glory laid up for them. And Paul said in Hebrews 12, verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. This was Apostle Paul's statement concerning Jesus. He positioned himself like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ finished well. And Paul also finished well. Say I will finish well. I will, say I will finish well. And you and your family, nobody will truncate your life on this earth in Jesus' name. Whoever was sent from the pit of hell to fight you and your family, I destroy their plans in Jesus' name. Their hands will not achieve their enterprise. I overthrow their tables. I somersault their cancer. Whoever wants you to live short life, not fulfill your promise like Joseph, I pray by the fire of Lugos, let them be destroyed in Jesus' name. By thunder and lightning and hailstone, their life shall not be found to be buried in Jesus' name. They will die premature death. They will die ugly death where their body cannot be found for burial in Jesus' name. What were some of the things that made our brethren to finish well. 
One, they focus on the commandment God gave them. I'm asked to lead a peace setting ministry where we use the ridiculous to get the miraculous and create people of a destiny and model who are not corrupt in the corrupt world to a poor excellence and character. Number two, they believe in the promised land that God told their father. Abraham told them, this is not the land you will get there. Isaac told them, God will take you there. Jacob told them, God will take you there. Joseph t- told them, God will take them. And under Joshua, Moses started the journey. Under Joshua, they go there. That your promised land, you will get there, you will inherit it, you will live the, in the land, make profit with it, serve God with your profit, and take care of your family, and serve the gospel in Jesus' name. Number three, the fear of God was in their heart, even when nobody was there to stop them from evil. Joseph was there alone with Potiphar's wife. He said, no, I will not do this great wickedness. He flew from Potiphar's wife, dropped the coat, and ran for his dear life. Daniel 1, 8. Daniel proposed in his heart not to sin before God because of the meat offered to idols. He said they will not eat. Give us pots, eat the vegetable and water will be okay. And they refused the king's meat. And after 10 days, they became fairer, better than their colleagues that ate the better food. Number four, they maintain a quality relationship with God. Abraham not say, God told Mr. White, God told me, Jacob, Isaac, God told me. They all heard from God, and they acted based on what they had. So if you want to see the end of your life and finish well, find out what you have had, pursue it with all aggression until you get results. Number five, their covenant fathers created altars to mark the appearance of God's power and love to them and his commandment. In the wilderness, they created altar. In the town, they created altar. Wherever they were that God appeared to them, they sat in one place and created a water. Now we don't have to create new altar, book from place to place. We now use offering. Do Thanksgiving offering, a lot from us they do offering, and that offering is a sign of worship that tell God, I will do from us in your city. I promoted, they pass their exam, do their courses, they do celebration, graduation, celebrate with men, and on Sunday, after that graduation, celebrate with the poor of God. As God gave the commandment, they obeyed, and they were happy that they followed God, and they had God. Number six, anything God told them to act upon, they had prompt obedience. Genesis 12, God called Abraham, arise, move to a land you don't know. Verse 4, Genesis 12, Abraham arose. 13, he said, arise, check this land, possess it, he arose. Isaac also arose and went and stayed in Gera, where there was, everybody said there was famine. God helped him there in a strange land, and he prospered more than other. He was the first person mentioned that a whole nation, Philistine, envied him. And they, they had to say the chief captain of the army and his friend went to greet Isaac. He said, we are, we are, we are bigger than us, please don't fight us. One man, greater than the nation, you also achieve your dream in Jesus' name. Number six, I pray as they acted in prompt obedience, whatever assignment God has given you, act in prompt obedience and be faithful until that vision is accomplished in Jesus' name. Some examples of those who did not finish well. That's how life is. Some finish well, some not finish well. You learn from both those who finish well and those who did not. Number one, among the list of those who did finish well, King Saul, he was man pleaser. The people wanted the sheep and everything, so we spared them for God's sacrifice. Abraham said, Samuel said, has God as much sacrifice than the obedience? They say, I, people, Samuel said, as Samuel has not come, he forced, he forced himself to bring sacrifice when he was the king of the priest. 
So he was a people lover. He pleased people, did not please God, and it did not end well. He pursued David to the detriment of his life. David kept hiding until Saul died. And as Saul died in a bad way, he died with three of his sons in a battle the same day. He won't die like that. Solomon, lover of women, strange women. So low, so low, so low, so low. Many women came. So low, so low is my turn today. They finished him. Marrying 700 women, 300 cocoa, 1,000. He will need three years to do war round. He didn't make it. He didn't end well. And God had warned him, if you don't follow your father and dispute me, I will remove you as if I never knew you. And that was God treated Solomon. When David made mistakes, God did not spare him. He dealt with him until he changed his way and repented. And he said, Saul did not repent. He said, Samuel, I know I have committed sin. Please, honor me before. Honor me. He was waiting for the people's Oh no, Samuel did, did not listen to him. Solomon was lover of many things, but God had warned him and he still failed. Samson, immorality, dead with him. He followed Delilah until he lied low. Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Presley said, Sam, tell me, Sam, tell me. He was pressing him. When Samson was vexed, spoke to him all his mind, and they cut off his head, cut off his eyes and lost his destiny. Number four, Absalom too did not finish well. Pride pushed him down to rebel against his father. A very handsome chap with one fine hair that he put there, done like Indian hair. He used his beauty and everything to destroy David. And because David committed sin with Bathsheba, God told him that sin will move him. Absalom lost David lost Asalon, David lost Abnon, David lost Adonijah. Three children died. Number five, Aitofe was a good counselor. God gave you wisdom to counsel. He could counsel anything. Aitofe said, under David, always come to pass. When David, when Aitofe counseled Absalom for the first time, God pushed Absalom to take Usha's counsel. And that did not go well with Aitofe. He went and hung himself. He was a wise counselor, but a proud one, and he died by hanging himself. Judas had a lot of money. Among the twelve, he was the only one that loved money and did not end well. The other eleven ended well. And the Bible says he returned the 30 bits of silver he bought Christ with and went and hung himself. What a bad death. Gehazi, loss of the eyes. You mean the king can leave all this word for this man? No. I must pursue and taste for him. He told like that the king had a visitor that he doesn't want his donkey item. The man gave him, and he still had two messengers that followed him again from the king, from the Nema, to go and drop for them. When he dropped them, he met Elisha. Where have you been? My eye went after you want to collect raiment and garment and Olivia. He was shocked. Had leprosy after that. He was Gehazi's, it was some, uh, uh, Elijah's assistant. Elijah got double of the option of Elijah, but Gehazi got double portion of leprosy and got double portion of the gifts. It doesn't work like that. What were some of their reasons for not finishing on time, not finishing well? Like we have always said, Satan has no new trees. It is the old trees. Old three trees. Loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes, and pride of life. He attend people with. He tempted Samson with loss of the uh, flesh. Tempted Gehazi and uh, Lucy, uh, Judas Carol, loss of the eyes. Tempted Aitofel with pride of life. You are proud. You can be the next king. Satan saw their weakness and tempted them in their low moments. I prophesy, Satan will not have any landing field in your family in Jesus' name. This month of June, no evil shall make you finish well. And you will deal with flesh and overcome flesh in Jesus' name. The flesh is always very weak. You want to eat and drink and enjoy and sleep. But the 
devil is also aware that the flesh is our problem. So what does he do? He longed to dribble us, trick us in our thinking faculty. Do it. God will not be angry with you. You can repent later. And anyone who does not take care of his body, the spirit and soul will not have power. So make sure that your spirit is at a lot, your soul is at a lot to control the body. If your soul is corrupt, you will push your body to shame and retrieve the spirit. But if your spirit is aglow, your soul is aglow, you will subject the body. Many of those who fail today were driven by the flesh. Say, I shall not be driven by the flesh. I refuse the flesh with corruption over our life in Jesus' name. Insensitivity also affected Samson. He had no good friend. Had no person he could confide in. Solomon had too many evil he was doing. Nobody could confide in. He had no good counsel that we have. Nobody could, they are top there in the corridors of power. They are friends who counsel them. They are no friends. Samson was a low voice. So he was defeated. I told had the wisdom of God. He thought that with him, any other person should not say anything. So when the cancer was rejected, flesh moving and hung itself. So now he can't be in heaven. Gehazi and Judas Carol loved material things too much and they fell by them. Something loved strange guys who were enemies to his feet and he was one before. I said, Nazareth should not play with evil or sin. He refused to appease me. He said, It pleases me. Go and get that for me. Satan removes Samson's vision and finished his destiny. God did not plan to put more feet in Daniel and Joseph more than he put more than in Samson. Everyone surrendered to God either by the will of God to pray or you surrender to the flesh either by pleading to not be sensitive. So they didn't finish well. The difference can be tied to some of the following. Wrong friends can also affect them. David and Jonathan were opposite of Amno and Jonadab. Jonadab led Amno to commit sin. Now, when Amno died, he said Jonadab that was reported to him, Amno had died. Evil man. David and Jonadab were friends all through. And even when Jonathan died, David went ahead and fought those who claim the kiss of if you want to have a better life today, read good Christian books. Read books on the area you are weak. Read books of men of God who see this and video, who are who are doing great things for God, and are currently God is using them. And you watch that video because examples can help you to move forward. You have no excuse for not finishing well. We have tapes, we have video, we have books, we have internet, we have things you can go go all over the world. We are not longer in the uh, old age, when the jet age is available for us on the internet. Just Google until you get it. Today, many of us have access to pastors, youth leaders, pastors available in church called counseling. They are there. Say so I can finish well. I didn't hear you. Say so I can finish well. And you should finish well in Jesus' name. Safety steps to take to finish well. I recommend the following steps can be constantly taken so one can finish well. Number one, take responsibility, take personal responsibility of your life if you want to be spiritual. God said to Israel in Deuteronomy 30, 19, choose life. I beg you, choose life. God was telling the correct. Don't choose, they choose life and devil. In case you don't want to choose, I help you tell you, choose life. And I'm telling you that God told Israel, choose life by studying, taking personal reading, spend time to pray, spend time to study, make it a regular duty. One hour in a day, I will study the Bible. Ten minutes in a day, I will pray and fast. One hour, I will seek the Lord in the midnight. If those decisions are not taken now, this month will run to our end, nothing will be done. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Don't speak negative about your life. Don't speak negative about your children. Don't speak negative about your, about your spouse. Anything you say, God told them. 
this ten times you are wrong with. Ten times God, God was counting. So God can count for man. And devil can also begin to push you to do evil to increase your negative calm before God. God forbid. Choose life. Study the scriptures. Take time to study. Pray midnight prayer. Pray midnight. Do midnight praise. Hearing from God is not only for pastors and bishops. As you pray and study, you can hear it. And in worship, very more common. When you worship God, you can hear more of his voice. When you read Revelation, you see that Apostle John was in the spirit and God spoke to him. Isaiah 30, 21. He said, you will hear a voice saying this is the way. You can't hear the voice inside the noise area. You can't hear the voice when you are eating and drinking and watching television. You need to hear the voice when you are alone. Not praying, maybe quiet in a room. Not watching television. Not listening, picking your phone. Keep your phone. Keep television. Keep all those things from distracting you. And settle down with God. One hour, 30 minutes, you go a long way in affecting your destiny. You are you want to study. Nobody can meditate for you. Nobody can pray for you. Nobody can absorb the future, uh, for life for you or scripture except you take personal de de uh, decision. You won't finish well. It's not, a, it's not a cost. Those who finish well, walked, prayed, obeyed God and moved as they had and obeyed God and give thanksgiving order as God spoke for, to them. Number two, be committed to building your spiritual life. This is what you do by fasting. Daniel understood by books. Daniel 9 2. 2 Timothy 2 15. Study to show that yourself an approval of one. 2 Timothy 4 13. Those parchments I left in trust, he told them, When you are coming, bring them, I need them. I want to revise them. Without knowing the word of God, shame will catch you in the day of battle. That's the truth. If you have to wait for the battle to be ready before you salute your God, you are late. Be battle ready. The Hugo also said, don't wait for the day of battle. Now prepare for war when there's no battle. Have a good prayer time alone with God. Pray with friends and colleagues and pastors and fellow unit poor are good. Those ones are good for fellowship and choice. It won't carry you far. You won't know more about your personal life. If you want to know more about your personal life, don't wait for church prayer. Pray and fast and be on your own. The best you can do is do with your spouse or do a low with fellow brothers at all. Two brothers, three brothers, family can be done. But don't wait for devotion before you know what God is telling you. Have a good prayer time with God alone. Be sure while you can read the book, alone with God. Don't depend on family devotion. In Matthew 14, 23, Jesus Christ went and sat alone by the riverside. Matthew 3, 29, Jesus Christ went and sat alone by the riverside. Sat down, because he goes to him. In Luke 6, 12, he went for all night and prayed all night. After that, he woke up and chose disciples. That praying helped him to get the answer. Mark 1, 25, a little while before the morning, Christ went alone and prayed. So this praying alone was uh, uh, designed by Christ, that we don't have to pray the prayers in the church. There are times I pray with my wife, there are times we pray together, and there are times I do midnight prayer or other prayer time without telling her, because she's very busy. She's a woman. So don't wait for your wife before you pray. And don't let your wife wake up to pray. Find time to pray in the spirit against the work of the devil and the environment you live in. Some people are packed into certain environment. They find that the place was polluted. You didn't profit them. Please, before you enter your house, rented, house to abuse, dedicated with oil, and let the man of God come and satisfy him. First Corinthians 14, 18. Paul boasted. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. You talking. He said, build up your faith or your most holy ghost. Pray in the spirit. Number three, make the Holy Spirit your senior partner. Holy Spirit, what do I do? What are you saying? The comforter to guide you, lead us and show you things to come. And you don't know the truth about tomorrow. He sees the future. So read books on the Holy Spirit, buy books on the Holy Spirit, pray in the Spirit, and expect the best from God. Number four, maintain a quality association with other Christians. There are Christians who are on fire, follow them. There are fire Christians. There are those who are weak. 
you call you, let God follow you. Let come. You give what telling you call, they woke up. Leave them alone. Maybe they are not the one to save them. They lead them to Christ. Maintain quality assertion and maintain your life and keep a life of fire. My best verse for the youth is Thomas 12 11. But fervent in spirit, serving the law, not slothful in business. Because if young Christians are not slothful, Satan are not coming. But when you see that you don't remember we are joking about politics, joking about the nation and football, that will not keep your life. You can talk about it, they are good games, but above all, spend greater time of your life, not on television, on your future. Have friends as firebrands, Christians, who you can who can spoil your life, encourage you for more hype. Like Christian who can tell you you can do more. Better is coming. You have done well. The world is far better. Iron sharp with iron. He that walking with the wise shall be wise. Number five, never rest on your heart. Yes, I have BSC man. I have a HND one. No, I have a, a degree in, in this. No. Wherever you are is good, the best is yet to come. Certainly, the best is yet to come. Number six, be a kingdom added by service and your financial commitment. Pay your tithe, giving to God, to men of God, and to the poor appearance. Because when these financial obligations are not paid, Satan knows that you are only running on the risky time. So you could call it a cost you to your car to some so because you are not paying. So when you pay these dues, God will protect you. Satan will not be able to have any inroad into your life. Number seven, believe your pastor's prophetic utterances every time and use them to do warfare. Second Chronicles 20, 20, by the prophets, you know the, what they say, they will help you to go up. Hosea 2, 12, 13, by a prophet, Israel was delivered. Danger of not finishing well as I close. Lack of fulfillment, you are not happy. Number two, one may not achieve God's total plan for his life. Which is not good. Number three, you leave a bad legacy for your children. Number four, people may begin to mock at you. Like we have a, that man who was going to battle, he did not go to war, he didn't he have enough soldiers, he lost the battle. That man who was about to build a tower, he did not consider the cost. So put him mock him. Finally, your cycle of friends begin to reduce as you have faith. Some friends leave you and you'll be looking for other ones because they know that you didn't make it. That's why in life, those who succeed, they have more friends. Those who fail, they have little friends. Finally, finally, you might miss heaven if you don't fulfill the will of God. So I'll finish well. I prophesy, having heard this message, everyone who has heard it will finish well in Jesus' name.